Good morning. I am coming to you today fresh out of the shower because today I am going to share with you my updated morning spring summer skincare routine. You know, my 62 year old very dry skin and I live in the Midwest where we have very extreme weather conditions. Extremely cold and dry in the winter, very hot and humid in the summer, and my skin goes from super, super dry in the winter to dry almost normal in the summer. So it's important that I adjust my skincare routine with the changing seasons. So if you are excited to see my updated morning spring summer skincare routine, throw this video a thumbs up and let's jump right into it. Last week I posted my updated evening skincare routine. I will link that in the cards and in the description box below in case you missed it. But one of the things I forgot to say in last week's video is that while we sleep, our body goes into restore, repair, and rejuvenate. So the evening skincare routine contained actives such as tretinoin and peptides to stimulate collagen and elastin and sort of support our body's ability to restore and repair itself while we sleep. During our waking hours, on the other hand, we are exposed to a variety of environmental stressors. So my morning skincare routine focuses on protection, protection from oxidative damage, from free radicals, and of course, protection from the sun. About three mornings a week, I do use my new face microcurrent facial toning device, but that's a whole other video. I will link a video in the cards and in the description box below if you are interested, but today we are just focusing on my usual everyday skincare routine. Today I did do part of my skincare routine before my shower and I will walk you through that and then we will pick up and I will demonstrate and share with you my serums, moisturizers, and sun protection. One of the little extras I did this morning before I took my shower is I did use an eye mask. I purchased these Skin Iceland Hydro Cool Firming Eye Gel Masks at 50% off two Ulta sales ago and then I sort of forgot about them. Until a couple of months, I saw a video by my friend Kiki, who has the channel The Hooded Lid, and she used these and she got incredible results in depuffing her under eyes. I will link her video in the description box below because it really inspired me to pull these out and start using them. Now, I don't use these every day. They're a little bit on the expensive side, but if I ever feel like my eyes need a little bit extra depuffing, a little bit extra hydration, I will pull these out and use them. I absolutely love them. Not only are they hydrating, they have beautiful skin loving ingredients, but they are the only eye masks that absolutely stay on my eyes for the full 10 or 20 minutes that I am using them. I used my last one up during this video. They are a little bit on the pricey side, but right now Derm Store is having them at 20% off and you can better believe I am reordering during the Derm Store sale. I really had hoped that Ulta would have them at 50% off again during the spring 21 days of beauty, but they didn't. To cleanse or not to cleanse in the morning is a matter of personal preference. Some people choose to just rinse their face with water. My personal preference is of course to use a very gentle, effective cream cleanser to cleanse my skin in the morning. I just love the way it wakes my face up, gives me an opportunity to do gentle facial massage and stimulate circulation. Plus, I just overall enjoy the experience of cleansing my skin. Now, my preference for cleansers with my dry skin, I do not like to use anything lathering or foaming. I do prefer cream cleansers. And I have a whole video where I did a roundup of some really lovely affordable cream cleansers. But today I applied and massaged into my skin before my shower, my very favorite Holy Grail cream cleanser. Let's say it all together. Yes, my mad hippie cream cleanser. I love the silky texture, the hydrating ingredients, the spa-like scent. Mad Hippie has my heart. Yes, there are a variety of cream cleansers that are also very effective. And yes, this is still fairly affordable. A little bit more expensive than e.l.f. and La Roche-Posay, but you can very frequently find it on sale. Many of you have purchased the Mad Hippie and have told me that you love it as well. Anyway, Mad Hippie has my heart. Immediately after my shower, while my skin was still wet, I went in with my Sukiyaka Suhada Urea Moisturizing Toner. 
This is another Holy Grail favorite product. It just seals in hydration and moisture. It literally is like giving my skin a drink of water in the morning. I'm gonna apply another layer right now. You just put some drops in your hand and press it into your skin. It is like giving your skin a long drink of water. I am amazed at how such a watery substance can add so much moisture and hydration. It has urea, glycerin, ceramide, and hyaluronic acid. I love it. Now, last week I also included the Sukiyaka Suhada Urea Moisturizing Toner in my evening skincare routine, and I linked Walmart and Amazon in the description box. One of you made a comment that it was out of stock at both Walmart and Amazon, so my apologies for that. This toner seems to go through periods of time where it is easily and affordable available at Walmart and Amazon, and then all of a sudden they will both be sold out for like a month or two. So I am going to link another website in the description box below called JapaneseTaste.com. I have ordered from them. They are a direct Japanese company, so it is being shipped from Japan. I have ordered from them. I had no problems. Luckily, I have a backup. I will link Walmart, Amazon, and JapaneseTaste.com. I will try to link some alternatives in the description box below. And if you know of any really lovely hydrating essences, please share them in the comment box so we can all learn from each other. So we have cleansed and we've used a hydrating essence. The next step in my morning skincare routine is to use antioxidant serums. Like I said, our morning skincare routine is all about protection, and one of the best ways that we can protect our skin is with antioxidants. So let's talk vitamin C. Vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid, is sort of the gold standard in antioxidant protection for a morning skincare routine. I have been using and loving and recommending the Timeless 20% Vitamin C plus E plus ferulic acid ever since I started my channel. I absolutely love that product. However, about four months ago, I did start on hydroquinone through my agency formula. I talked about it last week. Today's video is not sponsored, by the way. My dermatology provider recommended that I temporarily ease up on using l acid serums simply because the hydroquinone can be potentially irritating. Vitamin C can be potentially irritating. So I switched up from my Timeless 20% l acid vitamin C serum to a vitamin C derivative cream. And the one I've been loving is this Dermatology C5 vitamin C derivative. Again, it does have five vitamin C derivatives. It is not really a serum. It is more of a very, very lightweight cream. It, like I said, has five different vitamin C derivatives in it. Does have some lovely, lovely hydrators, very lightweight. It is not quite hydrating enough for me to use as a standalone moisturizer on my skin, but if you have oilier skin, this might be enough of a moisturizer for you. It is lightly scented. I do think there's some fragrance in it, but it has not bothered my skin. I think it is lovely. Like I said, when I first started the hydroquinone, I used this for several weeks, gradually added the 15% l acid in, and for that two month period, I sort of listened to my skin if it was feeling irritated, I went back to the C5. If my skin could tolerate it, I kept with the 15% vitamin C serum. Now, currently, I am not receiving the hydroquinone. With hydroquinone, two months on, two months off, you have to be under a dermatology provider's you know, supervision. So currently, I am not using hydroquinone. My dark spot formula contains other ingredients that are not quite as irritating as hydroquinone. So today I am going to apply my Dermatology C plus E plus ferulic acid. And I am pretty generous with this because l acid has a very short shelf life. I do keep my vitamin C serum in the fridge and I just work that into my skin. I avoid the eye area, of course, because it is an acid. And I am also applying it to my neck. Always put your skincare down your neck. I really do like this. 
15% seems to be sort of a sweet spot for me. There are some extra hydrators in here. I just feel like it's a little bit more gentle and a little bit more hydrating than the 20% aliscorpic acid from Timeless. But next time Timeless has a sale, I'll probably pick it up. But I do want to use this up before picking up any more aliscorpic acid because like I said, it does have a short shelf life. It is not stable and there is no sense in buying backups. So anyway, currently my vitamin C serums, I'm alternating between the Dermatology C5 cream and the Dermatology 15% vitamin C serum. Both of these happen to be on sale for a Memorial Day sale right now. I believe Dermatology is having a 30% off site-wide sale. I will put the details in the description box below, but I always have a 20% discount code anyway. They do have frequent sales. Anyway, that is vitamin C. Now, I am gonna use a second antioxidant serum, and this is a serum I've been using and loving for years and years and years. It is a timeless product. I love the Timeless Coenzyme Q10 Serum. Coenzyme Q10 is another antioxidant, but this serum, it is just so, so, so lovely and hydrating and silky, and I can put it everywhere. It's very slippery feeling, good for facial massage. Not, it doesn't leave my skin feeling tacky. Make sure I go down my neck. I absolutely love this Coenzyme Q10 serum. Now, it does have some Matrixyl 3000 in it, which is a peptide. And I know someone's gonna say peptides and L-ascorbic acid aren't compatible, and that is true to a certain degree. But I'm really using this mostly for the Coenzyme Q10 antioxidant protection. Ideally, you should probably wait a little period of time after the l acid before going in with the Timeless Coenzyme Q10, just so that the peptides are a little bit more protected from the vitamin C. But we're doing a video, so I did it back to back. Anyway, vitamin C antioxidant, Coenzyme Q10 antioxidant. Do you need both? Absolutely not. Do I love using both? I really do. My next step in my morning skincare routine depends on whether I am cycling on the hydroquinone or off the hydroquinone. If I was using hydroquinone, I would proceed to my moisturizer and then apply the hydroquinone after. But, but right now with my Agency Dark Spot formula, I am cycled off hydroquinone and my Agency Dark Spot formula contains azelic acid 10%, kojic acid 4%, resveratrol, and green tea. So this I can apply all over my face. And it comes in a pump, and it's a nice little cream. And I can apply this before my moisturizer. If I was using hydroquinone, I would spot treat my spots with the hydroquinone after the moisturizer. But because this does not contain hydroquinone and is really not very, it's not irritating, I am applying it to all the areas where I typically get dark spots. We know azelic acid is a potent anti-inflammatory. It lightens pigmentation. You know, these are good antioxidants and really helps with the dark spots. Moisturizer. I'm absolutely loving the Purito Unscented Centella Recovery Cream. This moisturizer is so incredibly hydrating and moisturizing, but yet lightweight. Lovely, lovely, lovely ingredients. Very, very affordable. Soaks in beautifully to my skin, yet really rich and emollient apply it everywhere. And the ingredients include Centella Asiatica, which is a very powerful, soothing, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory ingredient. Squalane, which is emollient. Glycerin, another moisturizer. Niacinamide, we all know that that's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, helps with pigmentation. Also has ceramides, shea butter, beta-glucan, hyaluronic acid, I absolutely love the Centella Unscented Recovery Cream. It is very affordable, easily available. Yes, style, style Vanna. I love it. 
a moisturizer, I will probably pull out a little bit more as we get into the real heat and humidity of the summer is the Vanna Cream Daily Moisturizer. This is very affordable, easy to find anywhere, and it is hydrating. It is not quite as emollient and hydrating as the Purito, so that is why this might be a good one for the summer when it is super, super humid and I don't need that extra emollients and hydration. But this is lovely. It's got ceramides. It's very, it's, it's a great moisturizer and very affordable. Another one that I use in the winter I don't need to talk about because it's not winter right now is the Dr. Jart's Ceramidin Cream. So if you have super, super dry skin, I absolutely love this one as well. Anyway, those are my top three favorite moisturizers. Right now I am using the Purito Centella, but they are all three excellent moisturizers. The last step and the most important step of my morning skincare routine is, of course, sun protection. You may notice a little bit of change in lighting because I did reshoot this portion of the video because I wanted to make sure I touched on all of the really important points. We know that sun damage not only puts us at a much higher risk for skin cancer, but it is the number one cause of all the signs of aging. Lines, wrinkles, texture, sagging, pigmentation. So it is really, really important to find a sunscreen that you love, a sunscreen that you look forward to wearing, that you enjoy applying, and that looks beautiful on your skin. That can be a little challenging. In general, my personal preference tend to be mineral SPFs, simply because I do find that chemical SPFs sometimes irritate my eyes. I personally enjoy trialing and testing a variety of SPFs. I have literally an SPF wardrobe that I rotate through. I also have an SPF playlist, and I will link that in the description box below. Today, I'm going to demonstrate two hybrid SPFs, meaning they are a combination mineral plus chemical filters. They are both untinted and neither one leaves any kind of white cast. One is the Can Make Mermaid Sun Gel SPF 50 PA++++ and the other is the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45. Both. So I'm going to apply the Can Make on this side of my face and the Dermatology on this side of my face. Number one sunscreen mistake is not applying enough. We know we need a quarter of a teaspoon of SPF on our face and another quarter of a teaspoon on our neck and decollete. So I am going to apply the can make to this side of my face. You, it, this is very, very, very lightweight. It says gel, but it's sort of a gel cream. It's very moisturizing and it does not irritate my eyes at all. I think you can see it is literally disappearing into the skin. So that is the Can Make applied to this side of my face. Now the Can Make is a Japanese sunscreen. They do use Japanese filters. It is just so incredibly elegant and hydrating and lightweight on the skin. It is beautiful under makeup and it is very, very affordable. On this side of my face, I'm going to apply the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45. Now, six pumps is a quarter teaspoon, so I am going to use three pumps. That is one eighth of a teaspoon. And I really love the Dermatology as well. It is also very lightweight, a little bit more a little bit more moisturizing, a little bit thicker than the can make, but it still does disappear beautifully into the skin and it does not irritate my eyes. And I think you can see the dermatology is blending into my skin quite beautifully. No tint, no white cast. Now it's also very important that we make sure that we are protecting our neck, our ears. So I'm gonna use another quarter of a teaspoon to my neck one, two, three, four, five, six. That is a quarter of a teaspoon. That is a lot, but that is what is recommended for your face and another for your neck. And that is one of the reasons why you cannot rely on foundation to give you sun protection. In order to achieve the SPF that is labeled on the foundation bottle, 
you would need to apply a quarter of a teaspoon and nobody applies a quarter of a teaspoon of foundation. You would look crazy. So when I hear people say they're getting their sun protection from their foundation, it makes me a little bit crazy. You know, it might be a slight bonus, but even if the foundation has an SPF of 50, I'm usually only applying a pump or a pump and a half, and that is a fraction of a teaspoon. Okay, I, I know I'm going off on it, but please, please, please do not rely on your foundation for your sun protection. The other thing is very important to apply sun protection on your ears. And if you have short hair or wearing your hair up, the back of your neck and your decollete. Once again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please remember to throw it a thumbs up. That really helps support my channel by encouraging YouTube to share it with other people who might enjoy it. As always, all the products that we talked about today will be listed and linked in the description box below. I will also list some other related videos of interest. And please, please, please share your skincare favorites in the comment box so we can all learn from each other. And with all that being said, I hope you have a beautiful day and a wonderful week. I really look forward to visiting with you in the comment section and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.